Hi, I'm Mike Shackelford with the Wizard of Odds website, and I'm here to teach you how to play blackjack. I'm here with uh, uh, my student, Angela Wyman, and Lamone, our lovely dealer. And I'm going to uh, try to explain what I call my wizard simple strategy for blackjack. Now, first of all, let me explain the object of the game. The, it has always bothered me when people say the object of blackjack is to get as close to 21 as possible without going over. No. The object of blackjack is to have more points than the dealer without going over. So it's important to understand that you're playing against the dealer and trying to outscore the dealer. I'm not going to get into all the rules of blackjack because it's such a common game and most people already understand it already. So let's just jump right into the, to the strategy. All right, Angela? Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to break this down into various types of hands the player might get. Now normally when people present what's called the blackjack basic strategy, that is how to play every single possible player hand by all ten possible dealer hands. This is a great strategy that any good blackjack player probably has memorized, but I'm going to teach a slightly simplified version of that. Rather than looking at all 10 possible dealer up cards, I'm going to break them into just two types, a high card and a low card. A low card is a 2 through a 6, and a high card is a 7 to an ace. Now, uh, first let's talk about dealer hard totals um, where only standing and hitting are viable options. If the player has eight or less, you always hit. Now nine to eleven can involve doubling, so let's skip over those for now. Now this is the most important rule of the whole strategy. If you have a hard twelve to sixteen, then you're going to stand if the dealer is showing a small card and hit if the dealer is showing a large card. This happens all the time and it's the most important rule that you should remember out of all of this. Next let's talk about hard hands where doubling is a viable option, meaning a hard 9 to 11. If you have a hard total of 9, you want to double down if the dealer is showing a small card, otherwise you hit if the dealer is showing a big card. Now with a 10 and 11, the rule there is you want to double if you have more points than the dealer. For example, if you have a total of 10, you double down if the dealer is showing a 9 or less. Otherwise, you just hit it. If you have a total of 11, then you double down if the dealer is showing a 10 or less. Think of an ace as being worth 11 points, so if you have an 11 and the dealer is showing an ace, you're just going to hit that. Next let's talk about the soft hands. And these are commonly misplayed by recreational players. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, if you have a soft 15 or less, you always hit it. Always. And do you know what I mean by a soft 15, for example? I'm not sure, what, what do you mean? That means that it's a hand that could be counted as either 5 or 15 points because there's an ace in there. So an ace and a 4 would be referred to as a soft 15. Got it. So you always hit soft 13, 14, and 15. Okay. Now, if you have a soft 16, 17, or 18, then you're going to double if the dealer is showing a small card. And very few players do this, but trust me, the odds are in your favor because a small dealer up card is good for you and it's a good opportunity to get more money on the table while the odds are in your favor. Okay. If the dealer has a big card showing, then the odds are not looking so good for you, therefore you're just going to just hit it. And a lot of people also make the mistake where they have a soft 18 and the dealer is showing a 9, 10, or ace mm -hmm. and they stand thinking, oh, an 18 is good enough for me. No. You should be aggressive in that situation and take a hit against any dealer big card with a soft 18. 
okay? All right. Finally, if you have a soft total of 19 or more, then you stand. Okay. okay. Next, let's talk about the pairs or hands that you might split. Rule number one regarding pairs, always split eights and aces. You've probably heard it before, but it's true. No matter what the dealer has, always split eights and aces. You never split what I call the three F hands, fours, fives, and faces. Faces meaning any 10 point card. Never split those no matter what the dealer has. And when I say never split, then you just revert to normal basic strategy. Finally, if you have any of the other pairs, meaning twos, threes, sixes, sevens, or nines, then if the dealer is showing a small card, you split them. If the dealer is showing a big card, you don't, and you revert to regular basic strategy. For example, if you had two sevens and the dealer is showing an eight, then because that's a big card, you don't split it, then you revert to regular strategy and just think of that as 14 points, in which case you would hit it. Angela, do you know about surrendering in blackjack? I have heard of it, but I don't really understand it. Okay, this is a powerful rule in the player's favor that few players actually invoke when they should. I'm going to keep it real simple and just tell you the best situation to surrender um, because it happens a lot. If you have a total of 16 and the dealer is showing a 10, you surrender. What does surrender mean, you might ask? That means that you just forfeit half your bet. For example, if you had bet $100 and got that hand, you make a gesture like this on the table and the dealer is going to take half your bet or 50 bucks and return the other half to you. The reason you want to surrender that, that hand is because the odds are so bad that on average you can expect to lose 54% of that wager. You would rather lose 50% than 54%, right? Yes. Right. right. And other players at the table may criticize you for it, thinking that it's a, um, like you're chickening out. Right. No, you know, that, that's a lousy hand. Um, cut your losses and surrender. Does every casino allow you to do that? No. Oh. Generally speaking, you can surrender in the shoe games, but you can't in the single and double deck games. Okay. So if they say you can't surrender, then just hit that 16 against a 10. Okay. And also, you can only surrender on your initial two cards. If your 16 is composed of three or more, or if it's after a split, then they're not going to let you. All right. All right? I think I got it. Okay. Finally, the most important thing to remember, if you only remember one thing about this lesson, is never, ever, 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 under any circumstances, play blackjack if a winning blackjack pays six to five. And you're seeing this more and more all over the country is they're shortchanging the players on blackjacks. Instead of paying the full three to two, they're only paying six to five. That is going to cost the player 1.4% on average, which is like tripling the house advantage. So if you see that 6 to 5, just turn around and walk away and look for a better table. Ah, I will. <laughs> well, Mike, you know now I'm going to have to go out and play your simplified strategy. But what are the odds of your strategy versus basic blackjack strategy? Good question. Of course, the odds are a little better with uh, the basic strategy. And as a reminder, this is an example of the full basic strategy. You can buy these cards at almost any casino gift shop, and I, it's on my website, of course, and it shows exactly how to play any situation according to the player card and the dealer up card. While this has about 200 different situations, um, my simple strategy only has about 20. Playing this strategy is only going to cost you 0.14% in additional house advantage compared to the basic strategy. So it's getting you almost the full way to the basic strategy with a much easier strategy that I think is going to be easier for beginners to learn. And if you're a good blackjack player, you really like the game, I highly encourage you to study the full basic strategy once you've mastered my simple strategy. But your strategy first. Yes, for most people. <laughs> Fair enough. Does it make a difference, the number of decks you're playing with? 
Yes. Generally speaking, the fewer the number of decks, the better it is for the player. However, the, the casinos know this too, so generally the rules are not as good on a single or double deck game as it is on a six or eight deck game. So you have to consider all the rules that the um, casino is offering. If the rules are exactly the same between a double deck game and a six deck game, you should absolutely play the double deck game. However, a lot of casinos are going to take away the option to surrender or resplitting aces or maybe even double after a split in the um, double deck game. In that case, you can use the blackjack house edge calculator on my website to calculate the exact house advantage under any set of rules. Well, we've all seen those movies where you know teams of people go into the casinos and they count cards. Mm -hmm. What are they actually doing and does it work? It absolutely does work. Um, the theory behind card counting is when the remaining cards left to be played are rich in big cards, especially tens and aces, then the odds swing to the player's favor. If they're rich in lots of small cards, then the odds swing to the dealer's favor. So while these cards are coming out, the player is remembering what cards he's seen, which tells him information about the cards left to be played. So let's say, for example, the player knows that there's a lot of big cards left in that shoe, a disproportionate number, then he's going to bet more, and he's going to change his strategy in certain borderline situations, mainly doubling and splitting more and hitting less. Now, card counting is not as powerful as the movies and um, TV shows make it out to be. It's not like in Rain Man where any card counter can clean out the casino. No, it's, it's a pretty thin advantage of about 1% depending upon how good the card counter is. So to be a successful card counter, you need a lot of money to make a little money grinding out that 1% advantage. Well, Mike, sometimes when I'm playing blackjack, this happens to me. I'm going to stand. Gonna do. I don't know about that. <laughs> you took the dealer's bus card. I would have won. Well, I was playing correct strategy. Well, still, hey, you took it from me. Well, what difference does it make? <laughs> now, was that other player right to criticize me? Absolutely not. That's one of the biggest myths in blackjack is that the third baseman or any player in blackjack can somehow jinx the whole shoe. A bad blackjack player does not cause the other players to win or lose anything. Of course, you can look at one certain hand mm -hmm. and say you just made the whole table lose, but it's just as likely as anything that he does to help the whole table win. On average, it makes no difference what the other players do, so um, that, that guy who criticized you was being rude and he was mathematically incorrect. So always follow that basic strategy. All right. Well, there's been times where I've had a blackjack and the dealer asks if I want insurance. Yes. And this happens. Insurance? Nah, I don't want insurance. Are you sure that pays even money? No, I'm sure. The wizard says you never take insurance. The wizard? That sounds like some kind of... Uh... No, no, no. He knows what he's talking about. I don't need insurance. All right, I don't want to say I told you so. Oh. See, you have a blackjack and it's a push. You would have want even money. Was the dealer right? No, the dealer was absolutely wrong. And oh. this happens to me all the time. You absolutely should never take insurance. It's a sucker bet. On average, the house advantage is 8.4%. Oh. Doesn't make any difference what the dealer has. Now, it happens all the time where the dealer says, it's a sure win, even okay. money. Don't you want it? No. Um, your odds are a lot better going for that full three to two win. So repeat after me, never, never take, take insurance. insurance. Way to go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it looks like you have another question, Angela. Well, Mike, what are the best blackjack rules I can realistically expect to find in Las Vegas? Good question. What I like to tell people is to try to find what I call the liberal strip rules. 
That consists of a six deck shoe game. The dealer stands on a soft 17, which is very good for the player. You can double after a split, you can surrender, and you can re-split aces. If you can get all those rules, the house advantage is going to be about 0.25%, which is about as low as it ever gets. We'll have to find a casino that offers all that. Casinos that offer that are generally on the Las Vegas Strip. Lots of times they have higher minimums to those games, starting anywhere from 25 to 100 bucks. So if they're for the higher rollers. In the high limit rooms, you usually find th these set of rules. So, but let's say that you're a little uncomfortable betting as much, you know, into the green or black chip area, then you're going to have to suffer some worse rules. There, as long as you're not playing six to five, um, you're going to be okay. Again, the calculator on my blackjack page on my website, wizardofodds.com, will tell you the house advantage under any set of rules. Let me also say my other website, wizardofvegas.com, will tell you the current blackjack rules for any casino in Las Vegas. All right, I think I know your answer to this one, but I've got to ask, what about the side bets in blackjack? Repeat after me. <laughs> All, All side, side bets, bets are, are sucker, sucker bets. bets. <laughs> the casinos are trying to eke more money out of their blackjack tables by adding side bets to them. There are tons of them available. Time doesn't allow me to explain all of them, but they're all sucker bets. Some are more sucker bets than others, but as a rule of thumb, just avoid all of them and just stick to the base game. Let's summarize blackjack. Um, blackjack is a great game. Um, almost everyone knows it. It's very easy to find in any casino and that has a very low house advantage if you play properly. What I've been explaining in this video is what I call my wizard simple strategy. It can be found on my business card if you're lucky enough to have one, or it can be found on my website, wizardofodds.com. The house advantage following my simple strategy is just about a tenth of a percent higher than the full basic strategy. I have tons of information about blackjack on my website, wizardofodds.com, including a demo game that you can play and it'll correct you if you make any mistakes. And finally, if there's just one thing to remember about this whole video, it's never play six to five blackjack.